Hello and welcome to Biblical Genetics. I'm your host, Dr. C. I'm coming at you today from the shore of the Missouri River. I'm actually in Kansas City. I came down here for a conference. I'm speaking at the university this weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. But I want to stop here and take a minute to talk about some of the things I've been reading this week. Now, why am I here? Because this is a really cool place. Lewis and Clark stopped here in 1804. Downstream, 250 miles, the crow flies to St. Louis. So they're coming through here and they're going that way, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Now I know Native Americans don't appreciate this very much, but at least as far as the Europeans are concerned, everything west of here was terra incognita. They didn't know what was there. They had to explore it. And of course, this opened up settlement and expansion and all that kind of stuff. I know that, but it's just an amazing and interesting part of history right here. And what was happening was we had a vague inkling of all the lands west of here, and we wanted to know it better. So they were sent to go explore. All right, now I'm going to use that as a tie-in to the status of genetics right now. As far as ancient history goes and human origins and where we came from, we still really don't know a lot. We're still exploring. We're just making our first forays into a lot of very interesting topics and we're learning a lot. But then again, um, it's easy to make a lot of really simple and big mistakes. A paper just came out. You might have heard the headlines. I'm going to read a couple headlines. This is from um, Science News. Humans' oldest maternal ancestors may have risen in Southern Africa. Oh, that's interesting. Science alert. New study pinpoints the ancestral homeland of all humans alive today. Live science. Scientists think they found mitochondrial leaves first homeland. At least National Geographic. Props to National Geo. They said, controversial new study pinpoints where all modern humans arose. At least they said controversial. This is good because this is very controversial. And you wouldn't know that from reading a lot of the popular level headlines. So this is what they did. Uh, the scientists, they went and they sampled DNA from a lot of people in southernmost Africa. And they were specifically looking at the mitochondrial. Now, if you've been around, you should know mitochondrial. Oh, look, there's Lewis and Clark. You should know that mitochondria are the little piece of DNA that you only get from your mother. Okay. Well, they looked at some of the most rare ones they could find. The deepest branching ones that are found in southern Africa. It's called L0, that, that family. What they did is they looked at a whole lot of L0 mitochondria and they put those people on a map. And then when they traced back all the branches, they said, aha, we think we pinpointed where they started. If you're not looking at a map, just imagine the bottom half of Africa, put your finger right in the middle of it. Today it's a desert. In fact, there's a really, really cool river there. Uh, you might have seen some um, nature documentaries maybe. You might want to look, look it up as a Okavango Delta. There's a river that runs into a desert and just kind of evaporates. And during the rainy season, there's all these animals there. And during the dry season, they're really struggling. But it's like this, this river to nowhere. Well, in a deep past, that was the largest lake in Africa. Just like the Sahara Desert today is a giant desert, but there's lots of archeological evidence of people living there and fishing in the lakes and the rivers and the marshes that used to be where the desert is today. So they trace all these lines back and they, they stick their finger on the map and say, this is where these people used to live. They assumed that genealogy can be correlated to geography. Did you get that? They assume that you could take where people live today and back it up to pinpoint where they lived in the past. Oh, but that is really difficult. We've been down this road before. People have made this mistake before and have been wrong because people move in history. We have lots and lots and lots of examples when we look at ancient DNA and then we look at modern DNA and we realize the people living in a place today aren't the people that used to live there. In fact, that is also true across a lot of Africa. The Bantu expansion, which occurred between 1,000, 1,500, maybe 2,000 years ago, as the Bantu-speaking peoples swept from Central Africa, they went east and south, and they pushed out the people that used to live there. In fact, a lot of people with the L0 haplotype, if you would let me use a big word, of mitochondria. So we know people move around. You cannot put your finger on the map and say, these people used to live here. Not true. They also made a mistake in one of the big assumptions they made in the title of the paper. They said human origins because the Y chromosome family tree and the mitochondrial family tree are not the same tree. 
Now, in the Bible they are, because we both start with Adam and Eve, but in evolutionary theory, the Y chromosome tree and the mitochondrial tree don't go back to, this, to one couple. And so saying human origins, when you're only talking about mitochondria, is actually a giant mistake. It is not at all certain that the human Y chromosome also originates from the same place. Another thing that's really crazy, they say that this L0 group started 200,000 years ago using that very slow mutation rate, which I totally disagree with. Using it as a clock, which I also totally disagree with, but 200,000 years ago. And for about 70,000 years, these people lived in this marshy, swampy area in Central Africa and never left. And then the environment changed a little bit and corridors of green opened up. And then all these people started spreading out from there. And they're still spread out in the same places today. In fact, the Zambezi River in Southern Africa is a major break between some of these groups. So some went to the one side of the river, some stayed on this side of the river. Uh, why are they still there? I mean, people haven't moved in 130,000 years. People haven't migrated, there haven't been any wars, or there hasn't been no Romeo and Juliet, you know, courting each other across the river. Maybe, just maybe, this L0 story actually reflects reality. As in, a group of people arrived in very southernmost Africa, and they lived in a swampy kind of region for a while, had a lot of food, and a lot of kids, and then the environment changed and they spread out. Fine, but why couldn't it have happened just a few thousand years ago? Why 200,000 years ago? And if I reject that African, uh, sorry, that evolutionary based chimpanzee human split time, then I'm free to speculate any way I wish. And I don't think it's any more speculative than the evolutionary model. This is Dr. C coming at you from the shores of the Missouri River. Lewis and Clark, they say the same thing. Have a great time. We'll see you again soon.